Have you ever pondered the end times? What does the Bible reveal about this enigmatic period? These are questions that have intrigued mankind for centuries. The Bible, a profound source of wisdom and prophecy, offers several indications of what the end times may entail. However, it's crucial to remember that interpretations of these prophecies can differ among various Christian traditions. Some view them as literal future events, while others interpret them as symbolic or metaphorical. This video will explore these signs in the light of the Bible, presenting a broad perspective. We'll delve into wars and rumors of wars, famines and earthquakes, persecution of believers, the emergence of false prophets, an increase in lawlessness, the abomination of desolation, the great tribulation, celestial signs, and the parable of the fig tree. So brace yourselves as we delve into the biblical signs of the end times. The Bible predicts an escalation of conflicts and wars as a sign of the end times. In the books of Matthew, Mark and Luke, we find a chilling prophecy. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. This suggests that our world, already so often marred by conflict, will see an upsurge in warfare before the end times. It's as if the globe itself will be consumed by a fever of hostility, nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, in an ever-intensifying spiral. Remember, these are not just physical wars, but spiritual battles. They are struggles for power, for resources, for the very souls of humanity. And while these times may indeed be frightening, we are urged not to be alarmed. Therefore, an increase in warfare stands as a forewarning of the end times. Natural disasters and food shortages, according to the Bible, also foreshadow the end times. In Matthew 24, 7, Mark 13, 8, and Luke 21, 11, the scriptures speak of famines and earthquakes occurring in various places. These verses paint a somber picture of a world reeling under the weight of natural calamities and the struggle for sustenance. The famines symbolize a dearth of not just physical food, but also spiritual nourishment pointing to a time when humanity will hunger for truth and righteousness. Earthquakes, on the other hand, often signify upheaval and change. They serve as a metaphor for the shaking of established systems, beliefs and structures. These natural disasters, along with food scarcities, are not just literal events, but also spiritual signs heralding the final days. They underscore the volatile and unstable conditions that will characterize the world before the culmination of the age. Thus, famines and earthquakes emerge as ominous signs of the end times. The Bible foretells that believers will face persecution and hostility due to their faith. In the books of Matthew, Mark and Luke, we find passages that predict tribulation for those who uphold their belief. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. It's a stark prophecy indeed. This prediction speaks to a time when believers will be subjected to trials and hatred. It is a time when faith becomes a liability, a cause for persecution. The cost of belief, according to these verses, is high. It could lead to being ostracized, mistreated, and even to death. But these trials are not meaningless. They are, according to the Bible, part of the signs that foretell the end times. As such, the persecution of believers is another sign of the end times. The emergence of false prophets and deceivers is another sign of the end times according to the Bible. It is written in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 11, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. This passage, mirrored in the book of Mark chapter 13 verses 22 to 23, speaks to the rise of misleading figures who will lead many off the path. These false prophets, as depicted in the Bible, are individuals who may appear genuine and trustworthy on the surface, but their intentions are far from pure. They use their influence to mislead others, leading them away from the truth and into deception. The Bible warns us of their rise as a sign of the end times, a time when discernment and spiritual vigilance would be more important than ever. Hence, the rise of false prophets and deceivers is a warning of the end times. The Bible suggests a rise in lawlessness and a decline in moral values as the end approaches. This is a profound statement from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. It indicates a world where moral codes are not just bending but breaking. 
where right and wrong become blurred lines. Imagine a society where the love of many grows cold, as the scripture suggests. This could mean a loss of empathy, compassion and understanding, replaced with selfishness, greed and indifference. This increase in lawlessness isn't merely about more people breaking the rules, it's a fundamental shift in the values that hold our societies together. The Bible paints a picture of a world in chaos, a time when the basic principles of human decency are forgotten and lawlessness prevails. But remember, this is not meant to frighten, but to prepare. It's a sign, a warning of what is to come. Therefore, an increase in lawlessness signals the nearing of the end times. The Bible describes two key signs of the end times, the abomination of desolation and the great tribulation. Both of these events are mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark. They are significant signs that point towards the imminent end times. But what do these terms mean? Let's unpack them one by one. The abomination of desolation referred to in Matthew 24, 15, 16 and Mark 13, 14 is a phrase that originates from the book of Daniel. It's a prophecy about an idolatrous object or being causing desecration in a holy place. While the specifics can be interpreted in various ways, it generally alludes to a sacrilegious act that provokes outrage and is seen as a precursor to the end times. Then there's the Great Tribulation, as described in Matthew 24. 21 and Mark 13, 19, 20, it is a period of extreme distress, unparalleled hardship and suffering that the world has never seen before and will never see again. It's a time of catastrophes and calamities, a testing period that's prophesied to occur before the end. These two signs are interlinked. Many believe that the abomination of desolation will trigger the onset of the Great Tribulation. However, it's crucial to remember that interpretations can vary and not all agree on the specifics. What's important, though, is the essence of these prophecies. They serve as reminders, urging us to stay vigilant, to hold steadfast to our faith and to live righteously. They warn us of a time of great testing and tribulation, urging us to be prepared for what's to come. In the grand scheme of biblical prophecies, these two events, the abomination of desolation and the great tribulation, are of significant importance. They're not just signs signalling the end times, but are catalysts that set in motion the final chapters of this worldly existence. These events, the abomination of desolation and the great tribulation, are pivotal signs of the end times. The Bible also mentions cosmic events and uses the fig tree analogy to emphasise the importance of recognising the signs of the end times. In the books of Matthew, Mark and Luke, there are references to celestial signs that are said to occur before the return of Jesus. These include the sun darkening, the moon not giving its light, and stars falling from the heavens. Such drastic changes in our cosmic environment would be impossible to ignore, symbolizing major shifts and disturbances in the world. Now, it's important to remember that these celestial signs are metaphoric, not literal. They represent significant changes, upheavals and transformations that will occur in society and the world at large. The darkening of the sun, for instance, could indicate a time of great despair or confusion, while stars falling from the sky might symbolize the downfall of powerful entities or systems. But it's not all doom and gloom. Amid these celestial signs, there's a beacon of hope and guidance, and it comes in the form of an analogy, the fig tree analogy. Jesus said, from the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. Here, the fig tree represents the observable signs of the end times. Just as one can tell that summer is near when a fig tree sprouts leaves, believers can discern the approaching end times by observing the signs around them. This analogy encourages vigilance and awareness, reassuring believers that despite the chaos and upheaval, these events are part of a larger plan, a divine narrative that has been foretold. In a way, the fig tree analogy offers a counterbalance to the celestial signs. While the latter may seem unsettling, the fig tree analogy encourages understanding and acceptance. It assures us that just as seasons change predictably, the events of the end times are part of a divine order, a cosmic cycle that we can navigate with faith and understanding. 
Thus, celestial signs and the fig tree analogy provide further insight into the end times. As we conclude, let's recap the signs of the end times as per the Bible. We have delved into a myriad of prophesied signs. These include an escalation in wars and conflicts, an increase in famines and earthquakes, and intensified persecution of believers. The appearance of false prophets leading many astray is another sign, alongside a surge in lawlessness causing a decline in societal morals. We have also explored the concept of the abomination of desolation, a significant event involving the defilement of a sacred place. The Great Tribulation, a period of unmatched hardship and suffering, is another key sign. Celestial events like the darkening of the sun and moon are mentioned as precursors to the return of Jesus. Lastly, the fig tree analogy emphasizes the importance of recognizing these signs. Remember, these signs are meant to prepare us, not scare us. So let's stay vigilant and keep our faith strong in these testing times.